day, my name is Angelo. This is Nation Voice Tower, that hub that keeps you updated on any issue pertaining to the political system, governance, and how it borders the Nigerian masses. Thanks for joining us. Please, if you're watching me for the first time, don't forget to tap the subscribe button. And if you've been, if you've been watching me and you've not been seeing my updates on time, please tap the notification bell. Make sure you share this video to all social media platforms so it could go viral. And don't forget to drop your comments for us in the comment section. Now, the recent trending issue politically these days is about Mrs. Beta Edu. This same Mrs. Beta Edu, who is now the former Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation. Now, she has been arrested by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission Operatives, EFCC, and has been taken into custody for questioning, together with former Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Sadia Farouk Umaru. Now, I stumbled over a source which revealed or who revealed the secret dealings of Beta Edu and her secret intentions before she got into the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. Did you know that Beta Edu had plans already to loot billions of Naira in the range of 60 billion Naira? Did you know? Did you know that Beta Edu had a plan on the ground to launder lots of funds even before she was appointed minister? This is what I'm going to be exposing to you in the next documentary that will come on your screens. Now, I'll be talking not only about Beta Edu, I'll be speaking about how she exposed lots of coolies that helped her land her money into personal accounts. So, in a nutshell, I'll be saying, in essence, Beta Edu's original plan will be exposed before she got into the Ministry, Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. Her initial plan was actually to enrich herself by looting 60 billion Naira. The accountant general of the Federation has been implicated over time and the Minister of Interior has also been implicated by Beta Edu during questioning in the EFCC headquarters and her third party private account owners have also been exposed. This is going to be a, not, a very very big bombshell, not a nutshell rather, it's going to be a bombshell and you'll be shocked at what ambitions our ministers have before they go into office. Lots of evidences have emanated from the recent issue found against the former Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Mrs. Beta Edu. Lots of statements she made while in office, which shows and proves evidence that she actually came to the office not to serve the people, but to launder billions of Naira into her personal account for personal uses. I will make bastard money, I will make bastard money, was what Beta Edu, the embattled former Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, told close friends as she eyed looting of over 60 billion Naira domiciled in the account of the National Social Investment Program Agency, NSIPA. To perfect that, she already got collaboration of the Accountant General of the Federation, Mrs. Oluwatoin Sekirat Madein to approve for her signatures of some persons so as to bypass the accounting officers of the NSIP. The Accountant General of the Federation willingly approved Toluhi Martins Olare Waju and Christopher Uko Joseph as signatures to the NSIPA account and they aided Peter Edu to loot 14 billion Naira already between October 18 to December 20. After the successful looting of the 14 billion Naira, these two went further plotting the next stage which was the removal of the 60 billion Naira from the NSIPA account to another account from where they will design a project and loot it formally. While Beta Edu was plotting the 60 billion Naira haste, Beta Edu was also alleged to have collected 3 billion Naira for the National Social Register contract to verify 11 million homes, which she shared to her friends and requested for another 5.8 billion Naira, from which she claimed she would use 4 billion to verify 2.5 million homes. The video on your screen refers to one Mrs. Ongelu Bridget Mojisola, 
the lady whose account was used by Mrs. Betta Edu, the embattled former Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, to receive the alleged 583 million naira that was signed off by Tolu Himati Zolare Waju and Christopher Uko Joseph, who were approved as signatories to the NSIPA account by the Accountant General of the Federation. The picture on your screen refers to the picture taken by Beta Edu and one Mr. Saint Badmos Ebunike Onoha who allegedly uses different faceless bank accounts to launder money for the embattled former humanitarian affairs and poverty alleviation minister, Mrs. Beta Edu. This same man, who is known as Saint Badmos Ebunike, is now on the run. Hundreds of millions have been allegedly laundered by Ebunike for Mrs. Beta Edu. Sources coming out from Aso Rock are saying that the Interior Minister, Mr. Olubumi Tunji Ojo, whose company benefited from the 3 billion naira that Mrs. Beta Edu made as a formal contract, may be suspended very, very soon, and he is currently in Aso Rock begging for his position. Yes, I will make sure I'm stinkingly rich. I will make sure I, I am bastardly rich. Those were the statements of somebody who was supposed to be saddled with the responsibility of catering for the welfare of Nigerians and less privileged Nigerians and somebody who was saddled or who was to be saddled with the utmost responsibility of alleviating poverty from the nation. Peter Edu from Cross River State has finally been exposed having a plan of enriching herself with her friends. You saw the woman on that video. She is part of the Croonies and third party allies of Mrs. Beta Edu. The man on that video too. There are lots of people who say there is something going on between himself and Beta Edu in the background. But that is not a bone of contention right now. But that man in that picture together with her, that man, uh, Mr. Badmos, is a big crony and a very, very strong ally of Mrs. Beta Edu. He is the one, especially according to the documentary, he is the person who uses faceless bank accounts to launder millions. So she had laundered over 12 billion naira in the space of few months and she was on course to continue to launder you know, the rest of the money. That is talking about close to 48 billion naira. That means she came up not with the intention to serve, but to be served. I am sorry that um, this kind of people get caught immediately. Well, my sympathy goes to Peter Edu and her cronies who are on the run right now. Mark this update. The Minister of Interior will be implicated. Mark this update. The Minister of, Imp of Interior will be suspended very, very soon. Yeah, so um, still on the issue of Peter Edu. The Labour Party presidential candidate, Peter Grebri, will be has reacted directly, of course, you know him, he has reacted directly to the rate at which the members or the cabinet members of Azewa Jubola and Mentenugu are laundering funds at will, especially Peter Edu. According to Peter Obi, he was speaking and reacting on the recent arrest and suspension of the Humanitarian Affairs Minister, Mrs. Beta Edu, and how he feels everything should have been done for things to work well and right. We, the politicians, have turned the country into a genetic criminal enterprise. And it must be dismantled for it to be anything. Corruption kills three things that makes a society. It kills entrepreneurship. Nobody thinks in a corrupt country. So you don't want to create. And entrepreneurship is what changes society. Because people are thinking, creating wealth. It kills professionalism. Tell me how people will be working hard doing research with university professors when they see people who have not been in, who are not supposed, who are supposed to look up to them any moment. You see me complain. How do you tell anybody that? You buy a car of 160 million naira for a legislator and you pay a professor 
400,000 in that. So if the professor decides not to eat, not to do anything, but to save his money, annually, he will save maximum 4.8 million naira, call it 5 million. So if he saves his money for 30 years, without eating, without doing anything, he will not be able to buy the car and perform himself. It is unacceptable. He wants to dismantle this to make the society. Yes. Well, righteous people and people who are upright will continue to speak when dubious people and fraudulent people are having their time. All right. When he was clamoring for votes from Nigerians, lots of people voted him, but somebody at the top there didn't want him to get into office. But that does not mean he will not be able to provide a solution for the good operational system of Nigeria and Nigeria's economy. I am sorry for better ado because she has become the talk of the day for a bad reason. Kudos to Peter Gregory Obi for having better solutions, not just because he has been in governance, but because he's actually capable and has the capacity to, you know, save Nigeria. And that is the point where I can call on him anytime, any day. Straightforwardly, I will tell you that Peter Obi can save Nigeria anytime, any day. But not like I am advocating for him or I am actually clamoring for votes for him. But from track records, you could say possibly that he can't do that. Well, I met Tedubu had a track record as a senator, as a Lagos state governor. What has he to show for it? This is why we say your track record and your history would speak for you. Shetima was governor of Borno State and Senator of Borno North. What had he to show for it? Only banditry, terrorism, and wanton killings and kidnappings. Can you see where we're going to? So, Atiku was vice president. What had he to show for it? All right, but Peter Obi could show one or two things for it. So that is why we say most times that he was or he is the man of the people. Now, finally, there is this update I want to break. Mark this day and mark this update. Kemi Ojadiamila would, in 2027, become the governor of Lagos State. Don't doubt me. Don't doubt me. Kemi Ojadiamila would become the governor of Lagos State in 2027. If and only, only if death, only if death comes into power. But if everything being equal, life and politics, Femi Bojadiamila will become the governor of Lagos State come 2027. Mark this update. Sheyi Tinubu will take the helm of affairs after he leaves office. Don't get it twisted. Write it somewhere and bookmark it. Know that I'm telling you what is real and what is legit. Okay? Now, uh, yes, that is because of what is happening in the background. I will let you know in frequent updates. Finally, the founder of the Albino, Albino Foundation of Nigeria one Mr. Jack Appel has spoken and reacted over the controversy between Yeshon Wiki and his godson and, and successor rather, Simnelai Fubara, the governor of River State. Over time, there have been unresolvable and unreconcilable differences between these two people. All right? These two political warheads have been in controversy over lack of, let's say, um, lack of, let's say, dividends of the state, yes, or lack of even sharing of the national cake. Let us put it that way, all right, because we don't know the agreements they had in the background. But the founder of the Albino Foundation has actually called out Yeson Wiki as the most senior politician in this controversy. He has outrightly let Yeson Wiki know that he is the minister of the Federal Capital Territory, not the governor of River State anymore. Hence, he should wash his hands of the governance and political system in River State. This should sound as a note of warning to the FCT minister. Please stay tuned. Let, let me look through this camera and address our good friend, Wike. Mr. Wike, you are FCT minister. You are not in charge of River State because you are not the governor, period. And I know you know that. So let's not mix issues and address issues the way they should. Please, sir, you are not in charge of River State. You are not the governor. There is a governor. There's a sitting governor 
of the state. And as long as he's the sitting governor of the state, you are not in charge. You are in charge of FCT. You are our governor here. We agree. But for River State, you're not in charge. The truth is, I mean, this is what you represent. You represent democracy, true democracy, and the principles and values. In through democracy and its principle, the framers of the democracy never, they didn't do it. It's not democracy by godfatherism for godfatherism from godfatherism. It's not. And we should discourage it. And people like that, and people like Nwike, should stop this attitude of trying to make themselves lord over a state or over. I think um, wherever Nyesha yes, Nwike is, he should know this and know peace. Yes, he should know this and know peace. He is not the governor of River State anymore. Hence, he shouldn't meddle into the affairs of River State. He should rather look over the federal capital territory and its municipalities. These are his jurisdictions as a politician and as a minister. He should stop delving and prying his eyes into the budget, the funds, and public affairs of River State. It is high time we told Jason Wiki the truth. It is high time Jason Wiki deterred himself from anything that has to do with River State. If you want to be relevant in the politics of River State, then you should meddle into the affairs in a responsible way and prefer solutions rather than ask for cuts of the national cake in a state where people are still trying to recover from the high level of you know theft and um, money laundering that they experienced under you in eight years while you were the governor of that same state. Thank you so much for staying this far. Please don't forget to always keep a date with us on Nation for Easter. See you next time. Bye.